collimation. A lot of you guys have asked about the ochre collimator and I wanted to do a second video about that. So for this video I use a laser collimator, a Cheshire collimator and the ochre collimator to collimate two scopes, both of them Newtonians. The first one was a Brezza Galaxia that's a 900 millimeter by 140 millimeter mirror size. It was my first scope and it's really difficult to collimate because it's got a plastic focuser which constantly bends and moves. And in the end, I swapped over to a 130 PDS which has a metal focuser. And I wanted to show you how you use the Oka collimator. And it's actually quite a difficult process, but when you get the hang of it, it's pretty good and it's really useful. The first thing is that your individual mirrors on the telescope, the Oka collimator is really good at getting your mirrors in roughly the right position so they're super close to being collimated. It's the final tweaks with the Oka collimator which make it really difficult and I have to emphasize even when you've been through the whole process it's really important to do a star test so you'd salute to a really bright star defocus the focuser so you get a donut and that donut shape should be a perfect circle and if it's not then you know you're slightly out of collimation but I really like the Oka because it gets your mirrors in pretty much the right place and if you've got the skill and the time you can get it very, very, very accurate, which is great. A few people have asked about collimation. So I've grabbed a Newtonian scope. I have literally no idea when I last used this scope. Uh, this was my first ever telescope and I love it. It's really good, but I don't use it very much now. And I have no idea if it's collimated or not. So I know that a lot of you were asking more about the Ocal collimator. So I've got the Ocal. I've got a Cheshire collimator and I have a laser collimator and I thought what I'd do is go through just looking at each of these. I have a mobile phone to take close-up video of stuff here and I've got two cameras here hopefully you'll be able to see both ends. I'm also recording the screen output of this laptop for the Ocal so I'll try and cut all of that together. So first of all let's see what the laser collimator tells me. So the idea of this is you have a target here with a laser in the middle and the laser fires down, bounces off the secondary mirror, goes down to the primary mirror, should bounce off the primary mirror, back up to the secondary mirror and if it gets back into the center you're collimated. Now the tricky thing with these is these themselves have to be collimated so I made a little jig to try and collimate it and this one's actually pretty accurate, it's not too bad. So I'm going to set this up looking down at this mirror. I've always tried very hard to line it up so that the target is facing down to the primary mirror. So I'm going to do that and then let's switch it on. So I'm going to get my mobile phone and show you a close-up video. So there we go. You can see the laser has just bounced back and is just there. And if I'm to move this slightly by my hand, it's wiggling it, it's causing the focuser to flex and therefore change the collimation. Now I always expect it with this, this is a plastic focuser, but you can see it's not going back to the center, is it? So it's slightly out of collimation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just try and adjust the primary mirror to get that in the center. So let's have a look. Let's loosen these off. Okay, so I'm just going to adjust this. There we go, so that looks like it's now collimated, but you can see if I adjust this, even just flexing it, because it's a plastic focuser, the collimation changes massively, even just wiggling it back and forth. But that's because this isn't a particularly accurate focuser on this particular telescope. I'm now going to have a look with a Cheshire collimator. Now, the idea of a Cheshire collimator is you look through that tiny little hole that we've got that just there, and you should be able to see the crosshairs and the crosshairs here reflected back at you, and they should all line up. So I'm going to shine this towards the window to get some light, and then I'm going to look through and see what we can see.
That's really interesting. I can actually see that the primary mirror and secondary mirror are nearly lined up. So I'm going to try and video this tiny little eyepiece here. So I'm just trying to show you that the primary mirror and the secondary mirror and the crosshairs are actually pretty central, but I think we can improve things on this quite a lot. Let's go for the ochral collimator and let's see what the ochral collimator shows us. With the ochral collimator, it's really useful to put a piece of white paper behind the focuser so that you can clearly see the secondary mirror because obviously it's black inside the tube. So if you put a piece of white paper in, it becomes white. I'll show you what we have here. So inside, I've just put a piece of paper. So it's just behind this mirror here. And then we'll look at what the ochral, which is plugged into the focuser here, can actually see. Okay, we can visibly see that the mirrors are not aligned here. So if I now zoom in with the ochral, we can actually see that we've got the mirror quite significantly off on this particular telescope. And that's exactly what I thought might be the case with this scope. It looks like the secondary mirror, which is here, might need to change. And the primary mirror as well needs to move across quite a lot as well. So I'm going to activate a circle and then make the circle a bit smaller. And now what I have to do is use the center offset to align this with the optical path of this tube, which is the focuser. So I'm now going to activate the offset and then I'm going to just move it across. Okay, so that's now aligned with the focuser. So this can't be adjusted, this part. So I have to align everything to this. So my first job looks to be to align this secondary mirror here. So let's activate the next circle. And then we'll make this a bit smaller. Okay, you can see quite visibly that the circle of the mirror doesn't line up. So I'm going to take my screwdriver and I'm going to adjust the mirror itself so that it does actually line up with that circle. Okay, I think I have now got the secondary mirror aligned. So now what I have to do is do the primary mirror. I have to get this mirror here perfectly in the middle. So let's get adjusting the primary mirror. Okay, I've changed the scope to a Skywatcher 130 PDS and now we're going to have a look. This has got quite a good focuser on it. So let's have a look. So first of all, we need to look at the offset of this. So let's enable our first circle, which is here and make it a bit bigger. Okay, I think that is the optical axis of the actual focuser itself. So now we need to look at the secondary mirror as well, which we can see, which is around there. So I'm now going to enable the second circle and make it a bit bigger. And we can see that this one is actually very close. It could possibly be improved slightly. I think We've got the first two circles pretty much where I want them. You can keep tweaking until it drives you slightly mad, it has to be said. But I'm now going to enable 
the third circle. So my next job is to try and get the reflection of the secondary mirror into this circle here by adjusting the primary mirror. Okay, it looks as if I've now got those pretty much where I want them. And now I'm going to put the star on. And you can see it's almost over where the actual sensor is and also the center circle on the primary mirror. Okay, I'm really struggling with this because I can't tell whether the circle on the actual mirror is in the right place or whether the sensor on the camera is in the right place. You can see that that sensor should be bang in the middle. It's incredibly difficult to get it right. I just don't know. It's just so difficult to do. So in theory, if that's correct, then that's the center of the sensor. But of course now, the secondary mirror position is wrong. And every time you move it, it moves. It's just really difficult to know where you're meant to put your reference for all this. Okay, I think I've got that pretty much spot on. I've actually used, instead of the center, I've used the center circle of the mirror to align to instead. So there's the sensor, which you're meant to align to, but there's the center of the mirror, which is there. I'm sure if I spend hours and hours and hours on this, I could probably get this absolutely spot on. But the reality is the sort of adjustments I'm making now, I'm barely touching it to move it. So I think that's pretty much collimated now. Let's zoom out a bit. So I've got the optical axis on the green there. Then I've got, if we zoom out slightly with the red circle, the secondary mirror aligned with that there. Although again, you could keep tweaking because it's not perfect. There's a bit of extra on there. And then if I was to make that smaller, the primary mirror is then aligned bang in the middle with the optical axis. So it's there. And then I've got the crosshairs and the reflection there. So I've got the perfect donut. I kind of think that's as close as I'm going to get at the moment. Um, the only real way to test though is when I start imaging with this scope is to defocus on a star and see whether the donut is perfect or not and then adjust it accordingly. But I think it's just a question of keep tweaking until I get it absolutely spot on. The nightmare that is collimation, uh, that was just with the Newtonian as well. Um, so it's hard to know from doing this, whether it's fully collimated until you actually defocus on the star. What I'd like to do as well is do this exercise with the classical Cassegrain because that's really difficult to collimate. And I have yet to get a perfectly sharp image from that telescope. And it's kind of driving me a bit mad. Of the three collimation methods, I don't really understand how to use this, the Cheshire Collimator. I wish I did. It's just so difficult to know which bits to tweak to make it collimated. So I don't really know how to use this. When I look through it, the crosshairs all lined up, but then when I used the Ocal, it was all over the place. And likewise, when I used the laser collimated, I lined up the mirrors. And then when I used the Ocal, it was all over the place. Collimation is an absolute nightmare. And I wish there was a definitive guide that I could say that do this and you get there. But until you do a star test, I think that's the ultimate method in checking your uh, reflector telescope when you defocus a star and check that the donut shape you get is a perfectly round shape. The Ocal Collimator requires certain steps that you must follow in order to do the correct workflow. First thing is you must align to the optical axis of your focuser with a Newtonian. You then use the center offset to align that circle perfectly on the optical axis. For a Cassegrain telescope, you mustn't use the center offset. 
So that's really important. It's something I had to get my head around that for a Newtonian you do use it, for a caster grain you don't apparently. Also the process goes so you align to your optical axis, you then have to align your secondary mirror. So secondary mirror is really important to get that aligned. Then you align your primary mirror and then you tweak the alignment of both secondary and primary to get the reflection of the spider and that sensor right in the middle of the crosshairs. It's super hard to do and I've yet to get it absolutely perfect because it is very difficult to do and it drives you mad because you tweak one thing and it knocks everything else off so it's really difficult to do but ultimately I think the Ocal gets you really close it gets your mirrors in a far better position which is great but I must emphasize that the best test to do is on a defocused star to try and get that perfect round donut shape and once you've got that I think you're pretty good to go as long as your mirrors are super close to being aligned and then do that out of focus star test to check that your mirrors are spot on. Thanks very much for watching I hope this was useful I will go back and do a classical Cassegrain when I finally got over the torture of collimating these two scopes and hopefully I'll be able to improve my classical Cassegrain as well using the Ocal Collimator. Take care everybody I'll see you in the next video.